Greetings. Once again, it's Motawasi sharing the authentic truth brought to us in this time, in this era, by the only teacher who is Zulula San. So, Zulula 100. So, today, before I begin on the teaching, I would like to thank Loba, the only and unique creator, to have allowed us to know the truth in this time, in this era, by the manifestation of his grace through his mysterious son, Zulula San. So be it. So here the teaching is going to be on the woman's veil. Woman's veil. So it's a cover over the head. Because there's many so-called churches out there that claims to be in the truth, that claims to be in the knowledge of the truth. They worship the fake Jesus and their fake God of the Bible. And they don't even understand what they are reading in their own Bible, what they accept in their churches. Because these people will claim that the Bible they have, so the current classical day Bible, is for them, according to them, the Word of God. But they are not going to follow what it says, fully follow what it says. And that Bible is full of mistakes and contradiction. And here we're going to reveal and expose what a lot of churches out there are not doing according to the current day Bible that they follow regarding woman's veil. So I'm going to use the current classical day Bible and then at the end, towards the end, I will use in Bibel the only authentic Bible without any errors and contradictions to reveal, to show and demonstrate that what is the woman's veil and the reason behind it. Now the question is, should a woman wear the veil? Uh, a lot of, some pastors says, are say, saying that fake pastors, of course, say that they should wear it during the so-called worship, other says other things. Other will say, will claim that no, it is because um, the Paul, the, they will use the personage of Paul, they will say no, Paul was, uh, he was misogynistic and he hated women and that's why he instructed them to wear the veil. That's what the argument some people will use. Other will say no, uh, a woman shouldn't wear a veil. They'll try to give some argument here and there. So for that, we shall go in Genesis chapter 24, verse 65. In the New International Version, it says this. So this is was regarding the right-hand man of Abraham. So uh, one of his handmen in the current classical day Bible, they will say one of his uh, servant. So one of the person, the man that Abraham, according to the current day classical day Bible, sent to found to find a woman, a wife for his son. And when he arrived, he said. And ask, he says here, he says here in Genesis 24, verse 65. And ask the servant, who is that man in the field coming to meet us? Question mark. He is my master. The servant answered. So this is according to the current classical day Bible. As you can see, they were using servant. The term servants and the masters already, but we know uh, regarding the context in the truth, it was a right hand man, so a person who works for. And so, and here it says, so she took her veil and covered herself. So here she covered herself. Why did she cover herself? Because the personage that was coming to meet her, 
she were going to she was going to be the future wife of the son of Abraham. So therefore the master the so-called master represented an authority and she covered her head in the approach of that authority. This according to the classical day bible as well it was prophetic gestures. So here, master is also with a lowercase m, and not uppercase. <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5, in New International Version, so in current classical day Bible, it says this, But every woman who prays and or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonor her head. It is the same as having her head shaved. Numbers 5, verse 18. When the priest was presented, the woman before the Lord, comma. So when the priest was presented, the woman before the Lord. So here, according to the, class, the current classical day Bible, it was regarding a woman who was in judgment. She was in judgment. So she was presented. So when the priest was presented the woman before the Lord, he must unbind her hair and place her hand and place in her hands the offering of proof, the jealousy offering to determine whether her husband's suspicions are justified. The priest will stand before her holding the jar of bitter water that brings a curse to those who are guilty. So as you know, they say the second part, all that is um, fake practices that the people who wrote, who re have re rewritten those Bibles, copies of copies, introduce a lot of contradiction. But we're going to stop here in the first passage who says that he must unbind her hair and place her in her hands so he must first unbind her hair so that means her hair were, was binded and he unbinded so that means he uncovered her head and because she was in judgment so that means spiritually uh, and regarding the woman's veil she was no longer because when he says that every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonor her head, so that means she is going against the law. And since that woman was going against the law and she was presented before the Lord, so in front of the priest, she was in judgment and she had to uncover her head because that's, that was representation of her situation. So that's why she, she, when she was going toward her master, according to the current classical day Bible, um, the future wife of the son of Abraham covered her head. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10, he says this, For this reason, comma, and because the angels are watching, a woman should wear a covering on her head to show she is under authority. So that's what he represented to show that she's under authority, that she's following the law, that she's obeying the commandment. She cover her head. That's according to the current classical day Bible. Now, some of you may ask, does that mean during if not in fake churches but if we are in church or during worship does a woman has to cover her head question mark according to the current classical day bible that's and 
that's what it says according to the current classical day Bible. But we're going to see according to the truth, according to Bibel, the only authentic Bible. So, for all the fake pastors out there who claim to be a following of the so-called Jesus and claim to be following the Bible and the commandment and the precepts, but they are not honoring what their classical Bible says. That's why you see and we witness that they are in confusion because what they are preaching, what they are claiming to follow, they no longer follow it when it no longer suits them or when the people in their assemblies disagree with them or no, don't want to do this practice. That's what you'll see in those fake churches, a lot of women with fake hair extension and so on. And the pastors in there accept it. They accept it because they don't want to go, they, they don't want to uh, infuriate them. They don't want to talk against them, against their doing, because they know if they talk too much, the people are going to go to other churches and their money is not going to keep coming in. So that's why they, even if what they're doing is against the law according to their own classical day Bible that they accept, they will keep their mouth shut or they will simply not touch those subjects, those uh, touchy subjects for them. But when you are in the truth, when you accept the verb, if the commandments say A, you say A, you follow what it says. It's not maybe when it suits me, no. We have to follow the law. So, so we have to understand, so according to the current classical day Bible, the woman's veil represented a mark. Represented also a mark of that that woman follow the law. And we know there is also a spiritual mark on the true believers. Now, not those in fake churches uh, that exclaim, oh, Jesus saved me and so on. I like I've already shown and shared and proved that Jesus Christ doesn't exist. It was an invention. So all those fake pastors out there, you have no knowledge. You know nothing. You're preaching falseness, falsehood, nothing. It doesn't lead, what you're saying doesn't lead to salvation. Because people in your churches and in your assemblies still practice false doctrine. They believe in a lie. They believe in an invention, that personage of Jesus that never saved anyone. And that's why your teaching out there are full of mistakes, errors, and contradictions. And you don't even follow what you claim to believe. That's why we are exposing here that... You don't even follow what your Bible says. And according to what Esombe says, so according to what or who you call Paul says in your current classical day Bible regarding uh, the woman veil. That's what it says, like I've mentioned, yeah, also in 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen. 15. He says this, but if a woman has long hair, it it is her glory, for long hair is given to her as, as a covering. So, other people will claim that this means that Paul says that the long hair represents a covering. No, we have to understand clearly what he says. He says in 1 Corinthians eleven fifteen in the New International Version, But if a woman has long hair, comma, is it her glory? Question mark. So it is a question he's asking. For long hair is given to her as covering. Period. So he's asking the question. And he's going to answer. In 1 Corinthians eleven sixteen, New King James Version. But if a woman has long hair, comma, it is a glory for her. For her hair is given to her as a covering, period. And 
he says this. The title of the of the chapter is uncovering the head in worship. So uncovering the head in worship. He says this. Also in 1 Corinthians 11:14. <clears throat> I will first read from verse 10. Uh, verse, before I go verse 10, I'll go verse 5. I'll repeat verse 5 again. But every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonor her head. It is the same as having her head shaved. And some people will say this came for, from a man. It does not. When we go in Leviticus chapter 21, verse 10, a priest must, must not marry a woman defiled by prostitution or divorced by her husband, for the priest is holy to his God. So, and that's why. So the priest must not marry a woman defiled. And the woman defiled will represent also a woman that doesn't follow the law, that doesn't obey. And he says here, a woman defiled by prostitution or divorced by her husband, for the priest is holy to his God. So when the woman presents herself in front of that priest, and she was in judgment, she uncovered her head. Uh, meaning the priest uncovered her head. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11.10 For this reason, comma, and because the angels are watching, comma, a woman should wear a covering on her head to show she is under authority. Ezekiel 9.4-6 He also said to him, Walk to the street of Jerusalem and put a mark on the forehead of all who weep and sigh because of the detestable sins being committed in their city. Verse 5. Then I heard the Lord said to the other men, Follow him through the city and kill everyone whose forehead is not marked. Show no mercy, have no pity. Verse 6. He says this. But do not touch anyone with the mark. So there's a mark that's on the believer, on the true servant. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of mind. So, when that happens, the confusion will be introduced. And the so-called pastors are not going to know which way to follow, what to do. Because there's confusion in their mind because they are in the lie, the anti-truth. They're picking and choosing what suits them in their Bible. And what they disagree with, they won't do it. And it's the same type of person that will claim, no, the Bible is the word of God. So, here it says this. Uh, In 1 Corinthians 11, 14. Does not the very nature of things teach you, teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a disgrace to him? Verse 15. But if a woman has long hair, it is her glory. For long hair is given to her as covering. As a covering. And... 
in 1 Corinthians 11, 16. If anyone wants to be contentious about this, we have no other practice, nor do the churches of God. 1 Corinthians 14, 37. If anyone thinks they are a prophet or otherwise gifted by the Spirit, let them acknowledge that what I'm writing to you is the Lord commandment. So that's what Paul was saying. That it is a glory for a woman to have long hair. And during the worship, they were to cover their head according to the current classical day Bible. Now, now we are going to go in Bibel, the authentic Bible, to see if during worship, during the cult, during um, when the teacher is giving the teaching, a woman has to cover her head with a cloth or something, so with the woman's veil. We're going to see that. Um, like I've mentioned, there's many errors and contradiction in the current classical day Bible, and uh, that's why you see a lot of churches out there in confusions, in total lie, in disarray. One, do th one church will do this, the other church will do that, but they'll claim they're worshiping the same Jesus, they're following the same commandment. But they all, there's so many churches, so many different teaching, so many fake pastors that are interpreting the, the, what they're reading uh, like they want. But in the truth, there's no, nothing like that. The truth is very clear. There's one and one church, one truth. And we see this in Esombe chapter 21, verse 4. He says this, If therefore, during the cult, or any place, a man has his head voluntary, voluntarily covered when he prays or gives messages of the truth, when he has the choice not to do so, comma, he does not honor Jokisabe and the second. So here, so during the cult, during when a man has is giving messages of the truth. So when he's preaching, giving messages of the truth, when he prays or gives messages of the truth, his head of that man must be uncovered. So a man has his head voluntarily covered when he prays. He is, does not honor Jokisabe and the second. Now, regarding uh, the woman's veil, we go in in Esombe 24, verse 7. He says this. In, let me just find here the verse. Just one moment. This. Here we go. Yeah, so still in, ver in chapter 21. So chapter 21, verse 7. He says this. 
any graced uninitiated woman, comma, on the contrary, comma, who has not reached the union of her three beings, comma, who prays or gives messages of the truth, the head unveiled, when she has the choice not to do so, she does not honor her husband, Choki Sabe, and the second. So here, in the truth, we're referring to a category of woman, the graced non-initiated. So the graced uninitiated. So not the initiated woman, but the graced uninitiated who has not reached the union of her three beings. So who has not reached the union of her body, her soul, and her spirit. Who prays. So we're not talking about when, some, uh, when the pastor is giving a sermon. No, we're saying here when she prays or gives messages of the truth so either she prays or during when she gives messages of the truth the head unveiled when she has the choice not to do so she does not honor her husband Jokisabe and the second verse 8 if she has no husband she does not honor Jokisabe and the second. So that's what it is, and that's the law. And it's regarding a category of women during a certain. Uh, so during the prayer, adoration, so during the prayer when she's praying and uh, giving messages of. The truth so basically like delivering a sermon or exhorting uh, the others and those are those who are um, who did not reach the you the unification the fusion of their three beings now he says here in Esombe chapter 21st, 21, uh, chapter 21, verse 14. He says this, Indeed, Moto was not pulled from Muto, comma. So Moto is the first man who was black. He was not pulled from Muto, who was the first woman, and she was also black. But Muto, so the first woman, was pulled from Muto. Moto, the first man, period. And Moto was not created because of Muto, comma, but Muto, the first woman, was created because of Moto, so the first man. Verse 15. This is why the graced uninitiated woman, because of Muntima Bikokisedzi, must have her head must have on her head a mark of dignity by marking her responsibilities when she prays or when she gives messages of the truth through the Munzi to other women. So that's what it is. So like I've mentioned, the veil will represent a mark. A mark of dignity. That's what it was. And that's why uh, even in the current classical day Bible, they, they said that people needed to have a mark. If not, when the Lord, according to the current classical day Bible, will go into the... Into, uh, the cities and so on he will strike anyone that does not have the mark now it is that's so there's a mark in the spiritual and in the visible that mark 
will also represent the veil like I've mentioned during the prayer. So that, that means basically obeying the commandment, having the verb. Um, that's the mark. Now, he says in verse 18, Judge it yourselves now. Is it suitable that a graced, uninitiated woman who has not attained the union of her three beings should pray to Loba without being veiled? Question mark. So, Esombe, who is Paul, who is known in the current classical day Bible as Paul, but his true name is Esombe, who was black. He was not misogynistic. He, he knew. He knew the law, and he wasn't, he was, he, it wasn't him that brought that law. It wasn't him that introduced it, no. That's how he always has been in the visible uh, for the graced uninitiated woman. Verse 21, he says this. If anyone like, likes to contest, Muntima Bekoksedi will strike him spiritually. So if anyone wants to argue, no, you hate women, well, what? Why? No. No, no. That, it has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with it. Because the nature teaches us. And the teacher teaches us. And... Bibel teaches us the truth. So that's the recommendation. And like I've mentioned, like I've read, there is a reason behind it that Paul gave. And the feeble-minded people who uh, who live, who wants to live day-to-day -day lives regular people who don't understand things spiritually will try to contest, argue, bring judgment. No. We have to judge it spiritually. And we gave the reason why spiritually. So, that was a short teaching regarding women's veil. How in the current in the other fake churches they don't even respect what they are claiming to follow and what is actually the truth what is actually the law and why that law is and like he says if anyone likes to contest because there's other people who say no they want to argue they want to say we are free Whatever. He says here, Munzima Bekoksedi will strike him spiritually. So, that was the teaching. And uh, there's only one Ibasi church outside of it, outside of the truth that Zulu Lassan is bringing. There's no other truth out there. There's no other path to salvation. There isn't. This is the only way. The way that Zula Sang. Zula Sang is the way, the truth, and life. All glory to Loba, the only and unique creator.